Uh, I'm a, most of you know this, I am a cheerleading coach. And cheerleading season began in earnest a couple weeks ago. Um, it's in full swing for sure. Uh, games start in a couple weeks, which is exciting. And uh, it's, in, you know, as a coach, you know, this year is interesting because I have 16 girls on my team. And last year, nine graduated, which means I've had to nearly start over. And, it, and, and I think about some of the girls who left, and they, I had a really talented, the group of seniors that left me were awesome. They were a really great group of kids. I had Quinn, who was super organized. She is like a walking Philofax, like she day planner. She would look ahead and know exactly what we needed to do. She's really great at connecting and communicating with all the girls. Make sure you bring this. She made a little checklist for them to bring the games so they made sure they had all their stuff at the games. She was really good at that. I had the King girls. Uh, they're twins, and they are super strong. Between them and Sarai, who's my flyer, Sarai is like itty bitty, and and between the, those three, their combined strengths, I could do, we could do any stunt. I could see a video and be like, let's try this, and be like, okay, and we would just do it. Like they just, they were so such talented stunters. They were really good at that. I had Hannah. Many of you know Hannah. Uh, she has been here a time or two. Hannah is so just kind. If someone was down. Hannah would be like, what, what, how can I help you? Like, she would notice that they were down, and she would try to cheer them up, or like, how are you doing, and check on them. She was really good at that. I had um, Jaden and Elisa. If someone was sad or it was tense, they would just crack a joke or do something silly to make everybody laugh and just kind of make it a fun time. You know, like, I had all these girls who had all these different skills, and together those skills made it just a really great team. I kept saying at the, at the end of the season banquets, I just love coaching this group of kids because they make it so easy. Their combined strengths just really melded well together. And so that, now they've graduated, and I'm like, oh, i got to find people to fill those spots. But you know, my team is young, and I don't have someone as organized as Quinn is now. And I don't have bases that are as strong as the King girls. And I don't have anybody as itty-bitty as Sarai anymore. And so, like... As a coach, I have to shift gears. I have to like, okay, maybe that's not going to be our strength right now. We got to find another way to, to make us be awesome and in, in a different fashion. And, and those of you who watch regular sports, like in regular sports, you see this happen. You have a you have a team that has a really great running back, and so they have a great running game. And then that running back graduates. And now they've got a great wide receiver, and so they've got they switch gears and they become they become a throwing team instead of a running team or whatever. Like a good coach, instead of trying to take the kids that he has, the people he has, and make them fit his mold, a good coach sees the gifts of what he has and and builds his program around that. That's what a good coach does, you know. And some like in college, those coaches can like recruit the kind of people that they want. But in high school, we don't have that option. In high school, I gotta kinda take what I get. So as a high school coach, you've gotta look at what the skills that you have and you've gotta build on those skills. And so the same thing applies in life as well, right? Like we each have our own skills. And, and as a church, we all have skills. There are things that this church is really good at. And, and then there are things that other churches are really good at, and that's not our strength. And, and part of becoming a church community is figuring out what is our strength and how do we use that. And for us, we each have to figure out, what am I good at? And what, what do I have to offer this, this group? What do I have to, to bring to this community? Because we're a community, and we each have these awesome gifts. You know, in this community, Paula and Greg, I mean, they're great piano players, okay? Paula runs the town of Ludlow, basically. <laughs> you know, like we need Rob. Rob's really great with spreadsheets, and he's, he likes to write checks, I guess. I don't know. He pays all of our bills. <laughs> you know, we got Steph downstairs. Steph is so good with kids, and she's down there making this experience awesome for our kids. And, and Dale and George, they, they fix and repair stuff so that this building doesn't fall apart. You've got John. John doesn't have a day job, but his day job is running the food pantry. You know, it takes someone with his ability of availability to run the food pantry. 
Roxanne is here every Sunday, and she gets here early. And that is awesome because she does communion. She puts together those communion cups every Sunday. We had a really hard time getting that bowl filled until Roxanne said, I'll do it for a week. <laughs> I went to a conference yet Friday, and, and we were learning that in ministry that's how it goes. I'll do, I, I said I'd preach for a, for a minute until they found someone else. That was six years ago. <laughs> that's kind of how it goes in ministry. But you know, like, it, within the church, we all have our strengths. We all have the thing that we do that helps this community of a church thrive. Some of us have strengths that we use outside the community. Like Cindy runs, like she and her family basically run LYF and the boosters. And, and that is a huge gift to our kids and to our families that they organize that. Like she's, she is so plugged in with our kids and helping our kids and the families get what they need to get. Like if a kid needs shoes or something, Cindy makes sure they get their shoes. So we each have that thing. Candy is like super amazing at making baskets. Like, for quarter auctions and stuff, like, she should just run all the quarter auctions. <laughs> you know, we each have that thing that we do, and part of, of becoming a part of this church community is figuring out, what am I good at, and how can I use that? How can the church, how can I use what I'm good at to leverage that? Mary is an amazing yard sailor, and she brings us all kinds of these amazing goodies that she finds on her, on her sails. And, and the Wormans have these incredible children that make me laugh. <laughs> you know, we each have our part to play. Tony, if you need a truck to, like, carry stuff, he's got you. You know, he shows up at the car, at the car shows. He mans the booth to make sure no one steals prizes. We each have our part to play. We got to figure out what we're good at. And every one of us is good at something. Everyone in this room is awesome at something. God made every single one of you. And he made you intentionally to have something to offer. And we've got to figure out, as a church community, how can I plug in what I'm good at? How can I take that light that God gave me and apply it to my church setting? You know? And so... Um, some of the guys in the Bible, they talk about this. So Jesus had, Jesus had everything going for him. But after Jesus left, he left his guys, you know, and he gave them instructions. And they, they each had their strengths. And they would go around and they would teach and they would write letters. And here's one of the letters. Um, this, I'm pretty sure Paul wrote this one to his church in Corinth. He said, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but all of them in everything is of the same God as at work. Now, each one is a manifestation of the Spirit, is given for the common good. We are giving gifts for the common good. We're not just giving gifts so that we can sit in our house and be awesome. We're giving gifts so that we can go out and serve and help this community. And when we do that, the more we're out there serving and using our gifts for the good of the common good the better we're going to feel about ourselves, the better we're going to feel about life, because that is where we get our life. We get our life when we use our gifts. And, and he goes on, he says, one is given the, um, through the Spirit the message of wisdom, another the message of knowledge by means of that same Spirit, to another faith by that same Spirit, another one is the gift of healing by that same Spirit, another the miraculous, miraculous powers, powers to do miracles. Another is to be able to prophesy. Another is distinguishing between spirits and one is speaking different kinds of tongues. And still another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these, all of these work with one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each just as he determines. You know, I went to um, this woman, she kind of travels and comes, uh, she does like healings and teachings. And I went to see her one day and um, I was just amazed. I was so amazed by her. And people be like, what do you want to be? And I'm like, I want to be like Lisa. And then I got to think, I'm like, no, I don't want to be like Lisa. Lisa has her gifts, and they're awesome. I want people to feel the way I felt. I want to feel as if I want to inspire people the way Lisa made me feel inspired. So Lisa has her own gifts. She is a healer, and she is a teacher. 
And I'm a teacher, but I don't, I don't think I have the gift of healing as much as I have wanted it. I would, I would love to be able to lay my hands on and people are healed. Lisa can do that. I don't have that gift as of right now. We each have our own gifts. We've got to figure out how to use them. We can't be jealous of other people's gifts. One gift is not any better than another. And a, and a lot of people start thinking, well, this gift is great. This gift, you can really help people. My gifts can't really help people. That's not true. We need the gifts that are out in front that are, like, visible. But we also need the behind-the-scenes gifts. We need all the gifts working together. If Rob didn't use his spreadsheet gift, the, the mortgage wouldn't get paid. And we wouldn't have a building. You know, that's not an out front gift, but that is a very vital gift. So each of us has that gift to use. And we might think, sometimes it's easy to think like, oh, my gift isn't as good as that gift. I have thought that many times. My gift isn't as good as that gift. And God's like, no, 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 no. I gave you a good one. I gave you a good collection there. Like, I have the gift of faith. And I'm like, what good is that gift, Lord? That doesn't do any good. And God's like, yes, it does. Because people see you waiting on promises, see the faith that you have, and they're inspired by that. And I'm like, okay, if that's true, okay, then, then I'll take it. <laughs> but, you know, I have a hard time. Like, some, I feel like some gifts are sexier than others, you know? And But God's like, no, they're all good. Here's another list. And, and Romans, this is uh, Paul. He was writing to the, his people in Rome. Um, he says, just as each of us is one body with the healthy members, and those members do not all have the same functions, so in Christ are we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the others. We, all of our gifts are meant to work in tandem. As a cheerleading coach, if I had a team full of bases, we wouldn't be able to do much. If I have a team full of flyers, we wouldn't be able to do much. I need all those things. I need bases and flyers and back spots. I, I need girls who can tumble. I need girls who are good dancers. I need all the things to have a good, well-rounded team. Just like a football coach. You can't have a team full of quarterbacks. If they all come on the team, they all want to be quarterbacks. But you can't have a team full of quarterbacks. Because if you have a team full of quarterbacks, your quarterbacks are going to get smeared every time the play goes off because you don't have a line. You know, we all have different gifts, and we all need to use them one together. <laughs> They, are, they form one function, and that is to serve this community. He says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to us. And if so if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. If it is serving, then serve. It's, if it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's to give, give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. And if it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And I, and I like this list. Like, who... To encourage, that's a gift. To be an encourager, that's a gift. To be a giver, that's a gift. To lead, that's a gift. Like some of these ones we know, but like the like encourager, that one strikes me as like interesting. Like that's a gift. But I, I have girls on my team who are really great encouragers. Hannah is a really great encourager. And we need that. We need that person who notices when someone's down like, you got this, come on. You can do it. We, need, we all need to have these gifts, and we all need to use them. So whatever gift you have, use it to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the word of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God gives, so that in all things God is praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Our gifts, the gifts that God gave us, are meant to bring glory to God. When we use our gifts in this church community, when we use our gifts together, and we serve this community, that's, that is the strength of this church, is we are a service to this community. That is our gift. That is our strength. And when we all use our gifts to do that, to serve this community well together, God gets the glory. Because next week when we give out 200 backpacks, God gets the glory for that. And you know how that happened? Through the generosity of people who gave generously. And to Steph, who planned it. Steph and Molly, who planned it awesomely. Awesomely? I don't know if that's a word. And to all of you guys who are going to show up and help us run games. And, and give your time generously. We are able to do what we can do when all of us figures out what we're good at and finds a way to plug that in. Every single one of you is good at something. Some things. We all have a collection of gifts. And when you figure out what you're good at and you do that thing, you're going to be like a fish in water. It's going to bring you joy. It's going to bring you life. 
I am the kind of person who's like, oh, there's, there's a spot over here that needs to be filled. I guess I'll do it. And I end up doing something I'm not very good at. And it drains me and exhausts me. And I'm like, why am I so tired? I'm like, oh. Then I realize, like, oh, because I'm doing this thing I really don't like to do. But when I'm doing something that God made me to do, when I'm doing something I'm good at, it brings me life. Like when I stepped up here that first day, I was like, oh, I'll try it. I was like, oh, this feels just natural to me. When you do the thing that you're good at, you're going to feel like a natural at it. You're going to naturally like, be drawn to that. So <clears throat> this week, I want you to ask yourself, what are my gifts? And they might not be the sexy gifts that everybody talks about. There's a whole big list, and the, there's, there's a whole other list in the Bible of, of gifts of, of, that God gives to people. What things, what roles do you naturally kind of end up doing? What, what things, when you volunteer or give or do, do you feel good doing? Do you enjoy doing? Those are the things. Those are probably some of the gifts. And pray about it. So I, <clears throat> I'm going to dare you again this week, as I do, as I'm going to now every week. I dare you to take your faith further. I dare you to get closer to God. And, and, and the way that I'm going to dare you is in four ways. I'm going to ask you to do something. I want you to take stock of your gifts. <clears throat> Sit down and make a list of them. Sit down and write down, <clears throat> write down what you're good at. Take some of those. There's 800 personality tests. I like, I actually really like taking those personality tests that tell you like what you're good at, like strengths finders and stuff. I love those things. And I'll take them. Sometimes, and I, for me, typically I take them. I'm like, oh yeah, I am good at that. Or there'll be something like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Like I took one and it said I'm good at like spatial um, patterns. Like math patterns and spatial patterns. Maybe not so good at math itself, but I'm good at patterns. Okay, and I use that in truly to create formations and to create cheers and move and like make stunts up and stuff like that. Like that's where I use that. And so like I didn't even know that was a gift. But it's, it was like my number one. I'm like, huh. So maybe take some of those personality tests to see what you're good at. Um, or ask around. Like just ask your friends and family, what do you think I'm good at? Because they might tell you something you don't even realize. Oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Or I didn't realize I was good at that. So maybe ask people, sit down and write, pray about it. Uh, your A for your dare is to ask God what gifts he's given you. And how can you use them in this church? How can you use them for this community? Because it's not any good to have a light and hide it under a basket. It does you no good. It does God no good if you have something you're good at and you don't use it to bring glory to him. Okay. Uh, your R for your dare is to read 1 Corinthians and think about what are the, what are the diversity of gifts? What, what gifts in that list am I good at? Why is the diversity of, good, of gifts a good thing? And then the, a, the E, once you've figured out what you're good at, how can you use that to help our church or help our community? How can you plug your gifts in to, to make this a better place? Okay. What ministry do we have that you'd like to be a part of? What ministry don't we have that you would love to start? What, what do you see? Where's a need in the church that you see that needs to be done and that maybe it's not getting done? Or that, that someone's doing and you're like, hey, I'd like to come alongside you and do that with you. Because we can make this an awesome place when all of us are plugging in. Because our organization, like many, ends up having like five or six people who do a lot of the work. You know, and so how can every single one of you plug your gifts in and use them to make this church great and bring glory to God? And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. If you have not said yes to Jesus, we talked about this in communion. If you have not been baptized, if you have not given your heart to the Lord and have the Holy Spirit in you, I would invite you to come on down during the song. I'd love to walk you through that. It's very easy to do. Um, and while we're uh, singing, make me a servant.